Yo, what's up guys? Eki here. This is the moment you have been waiting for. My NHL 23 strategy guide. I'm just strictly talking about what I would recommend playing and what are the advantages of uh, each strategy. Let's start with four check. In NHL 23, four checking is terrible. When you poke check in NHL 23, you lose speed. That means four checking is basically impossible. So I would play with a pretty passive four check. You have a couple options for this. One to two passive is the one I like to play with. You can also go one to two aggressive, which is the same thing as one to two passive but your wingers are a bit higher if you want to be just that tiny bit more aggressive weak side lock and two three are basically the same thing two of your forwards are for checking all the time and one stays back so if you like to for check i recommend two three or weak side lock one two twos are easily the best for checking strategy in countering players who are very good at passing so they don't have that much space in their neutral zone if you play with two three etc you get out of position very easily neutral zone again i feel like this game favors passive defense i like to play with one two two red have four guys back Back, one a bit more up. Personally, I'm just trying to take away all the passing lanes. If you like to forward check, one to two blue is the same thing, but your players are a bit higher up. They're a bit easier to get around, but at the same time, you could get some more steals that way. And if you want to go really, really passive, I would go with 1 4 or 1 3 1. Problem with 1 3 1 or 1 4 is your team gets very passive. And once your opponent actually enters the zone, if you have 1 3 1 or 1 4, your AIs are kind of all over the place. In NHL games, they've always had a tough time from switching from the trap to the defensive strategy itself. So with 1 2 2, either one of them, your players are, they have an easier time transitioning over to the defensive end because their formation doesn't really change. Trap and forward check again, I play it all the way down. This slider affects how aggressive your players are. Uh, uh, without the puck. Again, every time I've tried four checking this year, I just felt like opponents get around me pretty easily, especially in Division 1. Because there's just not that many tools to four check. Hitting is very good, yeah, but good players know how to pass before you get a good hitting opportunity. Defensive zone is pretty simple. Protect net collapsing. In every NHL I've ever played, I have felt like defending in front is the number one thing you should do. If opponent shoots point shots, so be it. If opponent is behind the net, so be it. I will just live and die by protecting my in front of the net because 80% of goals will be scored there. But yeah, if opponent is good playing with the defenseman and is good finding goals behind the net, you can get punished a lot by playing this passively. But it has always been something I, I live with. If you like to be aggressive though, if you don't like to be passive, I recommend a puck side attack. I think it's the best one for aggressive play. You get good amount of forecheck on the puck carriers without your players actually just moving like maniacs. Defensive strategy, you could go stacker it or tight point, but your players open up the in front of the net a lot if you do this. Especially your wingers are way too high if you play with either one of these. With collapsing, they drop back. I would always play with collapsing, even if you like to play aggressive. Offensive pressure is probably the most individual thing. This is something you really have to figure out. I think with all the strategies, it's the best you figure out what works for you, but especially offensive pressure. If you have conservative standard or defend lead, your players move up the ice so much slower than with aggressive and especially full attack. With many years I actually played with full attack, it's easily the best strategy to create scoring chances. You can score against anyone with full attack, but at the same time, your players just go up so quickly. And if you cross the opponent's blue line, your defenders are coming all the way with you. If you lose the puck, opponent has a 2-on-1 or a breakaway. So recently, especially because of tournament play, I've liked standard or conservative. So I have passing options always close by, and that my defenders don't chop jump up into the play. But to kind of counterattack my conservative offensive zone pressure, I do play with three high and leaves on early. So in counterattacks, my forwards go up very quickly if there's a chance. This way I can get those very important counterattacks goals, but at the same time limit my defenders for jumping into the play a bit too much. If I'm up in the game, if I need to protect the lead, I always go strong side land your players, search for spaces a bit more passive in the neutral zone, and also close support. So your players are just closer to each other and you have less gaps when you lose the puck. So yeah, three high leaves on your very conservative is the thing I do right now. Offensive strategy and sliders are interesting. This is what I won the European GWC with in the summer. But basically in carry dump, your players cross the blue line, opposing blue line, with higher speed and with more risk, the more you have in a dump slider. So I just have it at maximum. This is because I'm running conservative. My players are not moving up the ice as fast as I would maybe want them to, so I counteract that with having the dump slider on maximum and with leaves on early. If I would play with full attack, I would especially go to middle, middle and carry dump or 
just all the way down. Cycle shoot. The more you have in the cycle shoot slider, uh, the more your players move in the offensive zone. I really like maximum movement quickly, so I have it all the way up. Efficiency energy slider is the most important slider you have. It affects your game everywhere in the ice. This determines how much your players spend energy, how much your AIs hustle, how much they skate full speed, etc. So if you have energy slider at the highest, your players will spend maximum amount of energy. They will hustle without the puck more. I feel like maximum energy slider is the best for offense. You're just most unpredictable this way and your players move around a bit more, which I like. But there's so much negatives with high energy usage. Number one thing is your lines get dead tired right away. So just because of that, I usually never like to have energy slider above five. And another thing is the more you have our energy slider, the harder at least my defense gets. Because your guys get tired quickly and also your guys spend more energy without the puck when your opponent has the puck as well. So I feel like if you have energy slider max up, your guys will skate out of position a lot. If you have this on zero, your AIs basically don't move. And it's very easy for defense actually to have protect that with energy slider on zero because you just have this massive massive bus in front of your net. So I usually like to run this on three, just to make my offense maybe a bit easier. Don't block block. The more you have on block, the more they go out of position, the more they try to get in front of shots. And uh, I don't like them doing that at all, because then all of my AIs are running across all over the place, and I hate that. With block on zero, yeah, your players do allow your opponent to have way too much space sometimes, but I just like my defense holding their base formation. Uh, I actually forgot about the offensive strategy. <laughs> I've only liked behind the net uh, during that past year. I tried crash the net and overload as well at the start of this NHL, but uh, I just lost way too many games when I didn't play with behind the net. With behind the net, it's easiest to get the cycle going. It's easy easiest to get the puck possession of the game and uh, the more you have the puck the better chance you have at winning the game. Sometimes you don't have enough movement in front and sometimes you do have those games where you just hold the puck for 20 minutes and have like five shots and one goal. So sometimes I do like to throw at least crash the net in a couple of the lines if I'm struggling with goal scoring. With Krastanet you have three guys in front always. Krastanet is the best in counter attacks, all your guys are always moving in front of the net. You can throw some rebounds, some crazy plays. This year actually tip shots are very good, so Krastanet could be good for that as well. Overload I wouldn't play with. I, I don't recommend overload. You get way too little movement. Your players don't move no matter what you put in the sliders. Your players won't move enough with over overload. But got to say one positive thing about overload. Against players who don't know how to defend in front. With overload you always have one player there in the perfect opportunity for the one-timer. So if your opponent is just running all over the place, overload might actually be the go-to play. But yeah, like I said, I like to run all lines behind the net right now. Defense. Hold line pinch. I don't like my defenders pinching. If you didn't know, this affects both in your opponent's blue line and your own blue line. So the more you have on this, higher your defenders will basically be. That's basically what this means. I always have the pinch slider on zero. Your defenders do allow your opponent to come to your zone a bit easier. They give them quite a bit of a gap, but at the same time, your opponent can't straight line past you if you have this on zero and they actually have to play good to get past your defense. If you have been on maximum you can allow way too many counter attacks. If your opponent has players like McKinnon, McDavid, you could basically straight line past your slower defenders if you play with pinch. Yeah, I like, I've always liked zero. Pinch is one slider, probably always has stayed the same for me since I remember. Cycle shoot. Uh, for defenders, the more you have on shoot, the more they go to the middle of the ice to search for shots. That's what I've noticed. If you have cycle shoot on zero, your players stay on the boards, they stay very passive. Even if there's space uh, in the slot to attack to, they never go there if you have cycle shoot on zero. With maximum they attack those open spaces to get those wide open slot shots uh, near the point. So yeah, basically your defenders are just more aggressive searching for open areas without the puck, the more you have on the shoot slider. This is a very interesting slider. Uh, against some opponents, I feel like having this on zero is perfect. It gives you the puck control a bit more, always having your defenders passive, always being able to uh, drop the puck to the point. But again, the problem is you might just not create enough offense that way. I'm actually lately, I've tried this on maximum to have more danger in the offensive zone. Last NHL I had this on middle. This is the slider I don't really know where to put, but I have it at maximum right now. Power play, I play with umbrella. First things first, I hate every power play formation in the game. I wish I could just play with behind the net on the power play, but I can't. Umbrella, I feel like it's very similar to overload. The difference is you always always have two guys in, the, in a one-timer. Like look at the formation. Tavares Marner are on the right side and Nylander Sandin are on the left side. So you basically have double one-timers on both sides. But I think with umbrella as well, your players are standing 
standing around a bit too much. It's sometimes tough to find good spaces. The new 131 I didn't like at all. I, I don't know. Your wing players, so in this photo, Morer and Sandin, like in game, I feel like they're way too far away from the net. You get good one timer opportunities to those wing players, but those farther away one timers don't go in this year, so I think it's pointless to run 1 3 1. In the past NHS, this might have been very good. Shooting, I've tried a couple times. I don't think I've ever scored with it. I have no idea what the players do with shooting. Uh, just don't use it. Or I wouldn't use it. Power play breakout. This is another strategy I have no idea about. I just ran randomly switch this every now and then. I usually play with five back just to have passing options. There's my updated strategy guide for NHL 23. Again, if you want to know more in detail what every strategy does, like what they actually do, I had a video explaining all of that two years ago. I don't want to do the same video again, so I didn't maybe explain uh, that well most of the strategies. Anyways, these are my strategies right now. You can copy them. I can show them one more time. These are my strategies. Yes, yes, yes. And don't leave yet. One thing I have to mention. Strategies at the start of NHL 23 are glitched. It affects only defensive strategy, neutral zone and forecheck. I will try to explain this the best I can. You know the dots in game? Here's an example. Stuckered in NHL 22 was the second dot in defensive strategy. In NHL 23, second dot is tight point. But the thing is, in NHL 23, the second dot still acts like Stackered and not tight point. Do you get what I'm saying? So the dots are misplaced in defensive strategy, forecheck and neutral zone. Here in the screen, you see all the glitched affected strategies right now. In the left side, you see what you put in the game itself. And in the right side, you see what you actually play with if you use the left side strategy. So for example, in NHL 23 right now, if you play with Stackered, you're actually playing with Collapsing and etc, etc, etc. I think you get the idea. So yeah, I just have to mention that hopefully it's fixed as soon as possible. If you want to run my strategies in the game itself right now, you need to run 1-2-2 to aggressive, 1-3-1 one, one, and stack it. This is basically collapsing 1-2-2 to to red and 1-2-2 to to passive in game. Okay. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Much appreciated. Have a great day and see you next time. Okay, I forgot about a couple things. First of all, in the penalty kill, I play with passive box. That's what I've always done. Second thing is, I do change my strategies around quite a bit. So all the strats might be a bit different in a couple months if the meta on how you should play changes. So I stream almost daily over on Twitch. You can always come over to my Twitch and ask me what strategies I'm running and I will show you. All right, <laughs> see you. <laughs>